All right, so customer had a uh, repair attempt here, and this is some of the aftermath. I'll clean this up, and I'll show you what we're dealing with. Um, I'm all for folks trying to fix their own stuff. Um, it's the only way that you learn, really. Uh, but I would suggest working on larger components first, and then to work your way down. Again, like I said, I'm a strong believer in that if, if it's broke, you know, you're not going to double break it. <laughs> um, but if you if you ever wanted to have the option to have uh, a qualified technician fix it, you, you want them to be able to start from as close to uh, factory stock as possible. It makes their job a whole lot easier. Uh, the biggest problem we have here is that when he tried to come in and f and replace this part, he would have tried to remove the old part. And in, and in doing so, there's a couple of big challenges here. One is the these legs and these legs are all tied to the same pad. And so that pad acts as like a heat sink. So you come in with your soldering iron and you see it melting on like the surface, or you see this leg here, which has just its own little um, trace by itself. It looks, it looks like it's wet and it's melted and you go to yank on the part and it doesn't come. And that's because, you know, the, the backside on the, the, the bottom part of the leg is still solid because it's, it's shedding all of its heat over to here. So you have to get this entire thing, uh, up to temperature or, you know, before that'll flow. If you come in with the right, the wrong tools, or at least you have to get to this point here, uh, at that temperature and more challenging is that you have to get the other side farthest away from your soldering iron way over here through this little uh, valley uh, or, or trace. This is also thermally conducting away heat into this massive pad here. And so if you go to yank on the part, it it's not going to come up easily with a regular soldering iron. Okay. Um, and so in doing so, what we see here is that he's lifted a couple of pads which is where the part would have previously rested on. See this guy here? That used to live probably over here. There. Now, if we're lucky, that pad goes to nothing. I'm going to have to look at the schematic um, and the board layout. Um, but looking here, sometimes it, they'll, well, not almost always, they put a pad to let the leg anchor to. Oh, no, I can see a bit of a trace there. So that, see how it's curled up on the end? So it's it probably went this way and laid out flat. Come on, out there, little booger. Yeah, see, it's like a little ribbon. It's like rolled up here. It's probably went there. And if I flattened that out, it would probably connect to this. Um, but I'll double check that for sure. That's broken also. It's... This is some of the subtle stuff that unless you get in here with a microscope, you might, you might miss. But it looks to me that uh, this trace here that comes off this capacitor makes kind of a 90 degree turn this way and picks up one of the legs of that package. And it's cracked along there. It's really subtle, but it's there. So I'll have to repair that as well. Yeah, what you guys might not see is that um, just, off, just off screen here, um, when the guy come in with the soldering iron, the, the length of the soldering iron, not the tip, but just the length, that's also often just as hot as the tip. Um, it was melting all sorts of relays and other components and stuff that are adjacent to this thing. So now I got to go double check all those as well. So cool. All right. Next steps to re repair some of these traces and, um, get the new part right. in. So let's give it some flux. I think I got the right orientation. I'm not sure. Why don't you guys scroll back to the beginning and tell me if I got it right? There we go. So the flux is also going to help hold the part down, keep it from popping around on you.
you guys, some of you guys are like, what? <laughs> some of that slush, that solder blob. <laughs> um, I might leave it like that intentionally. Um, there are there are some theories that uh, this part is, gets, that it overheats uh, and that it also is getting voltage spikes from different rails and it's um, in danger. There's some ESD dangers, a lot of speculation. So a big glob like that, um, electrically, we'll just hold all that together. As long as it's not messing with any of the RF properties of this thing, uh, as far as like impedances go or matching, then it'll act more as a heat sink than anything else. And so I might just leave that like that. Um, if I need to clean it up later to get a part in or inspect something, I will. Um, but that's that. So now we just need to make some of the other repairs, but I'm, I'm going to go consult. I've got, I've got some, 20 puff capacitors on their way. They might be, they're, they're gonna be replacing like this part or that part, one of these other capacitors. It's like a, you know, a, a half that size. And so I might pause here because if I'm gonna run a leg from here to there, but it goes to a different capacitor that's like a different package size, I might be able to just squeeze it all in there and uh, do all that at once. So uh, we'll pause here and then uh, wait for the FedEx man to show up. All right, just to give you guys a reference of where we're add on the board here is the bottom side yeah bottom side over here in the corner and that's the little guy that we're zoomed in on there and that's it all cleaned up and some of those traces repaired so there is some documentation I'll put it in the description below if you're trying to uh, do some similar troubleshooting um, or there's some support circuitry that can go um, in and around this part um, Namely, it's VCC in. I'll have to look at the diagram, probably that guy, um, where they're you know adding an inductor to keep some of the spikes out, and then there's, they're adding a capacitor somewhere else to do some smoothing. Again, this is just um, hobbyists and other hams that have like um, taken a stab at trying to uh, keep this part from popping in the future. So um, I'll include that. And right now, troubleshooting wise, I went ahead and just put it back to stock. And so if this fixes it, then I'll do that preventive maintenance uh, next before it goes back to the customer. But uh, this is it all uh, tidied up and let's go get it back on the bench and see if we get some power. All right, so now we're uh, back at the bench here, just doing a sanity check. Uh, what you're looking for here is watts. Let's double check our, yep, receive. I, I like to, once I've reconnected a radio, uh, I like to check the receive path because that lets me know that all, at least all of my RF connections are going properly. Um, and we saw earlier that there was that relay that the previous person that was in there had melted with an iron, uh, soldering iron. So um, that might be stuck in the wrong position. And, and actually this particular unit won't switch between antenna one and antenna two. It's like constantly on antenna one. Uh, so that needs a further investigation. We'll uh, have to see if the customer wants to take a look at that. So that brings us to now, the big question is, will it transmit back on monitor here we go and very nice yeah so it wasn't even doing this before uh so one watt not impressive but if we come over here and twiddle this knob yep we can get lots more power out of it very awesome all right so um let's kick it over to fm and FM should give us full power. There you go, about 75, 76 watts. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna call that one fixed. Let's get, I'll get this thing uh, buttoned up and that'll be the end of it. All right, there you go. Another quick installment of Julian's random project. I've been doing more and more of these ham radio repairs and it's just been word of mouth right now. Just people that know that I can, uh, you know, repair things at this level uh, with the surface mount and, you know, some of these really complex uh, transceivers. Uh, if you've got something that you like to get fixed, I'm gonna put to either, try and find me on Instagram. Um, I might do a Facebook page if I do, I'll put a link in the description uh, where you guys can try and get a hold of me. Um, I'm in Central Texas around uh, Austin, Bastrop area. So, uh, yeah, hit me up if you've got something uh, that you need repaired like this uh, or a mod you want done, something like that. So uh, I'm open for business now, apparently. <laughs> you guys take it easy uh, and make sure you subscribe to Julian's Random Projects. I'm hanging in, there ain't no doubt. And I'm hanging tough, over and out, over and out, over and out.